Hey guys, welcome to the BFF Report. I'm your host, Mike B. A. K. Phony. This is a review of the Razer Star Gazer. I think it's this one right here. There you go. It has three different modules here on the front, and what it does is basically it senses depth to tell where the player is, or where the streamer is, so it can cut out their background, the room that they've they're in constant flux. I've not yet unpacked from Twitch, and simultaneously I'm also helping, kind of building like three different computers. There's a lot of stuff going on in this room, as are with most of you guys probably as well. So it needs to be able to cut out this. If you have a chroma key set up, you're probably pretty much good to go. As a matter of fact, after you're watching this, you might not even want to switch to it, even though you, maybe you want to take it down. You might be like, you know what, chroma key doesn't seem that bad. Because the overall verdict I have on this, I'll tell you, get it out of the way right now, is that it's just okay. And I feel like technology isn't quite there yet, for what they're using. It is neat. That's kind of where it ends though. So today we're gonna to do a couple tests with a bunch of various different things. I'm gonna grab random things around the room. I'm, I'm gonna try different color shirts on. I'm gonna try all these different things to show you guys what it looks like, uh, what, what, what the cutout looks like and how it's how it actively cuts you out of the frame and all the different issues that come from using it. It's not perfect. It's the first most advanced webcam of its kind uh, but it's also the first gen of that webcam, and you know what that could do. So, first test, let's go ahead and toggle everything over to this. This is Intel RealSense's real-time cutting out of the background. I put a blue background in the background to make it very easy for you guys to see uh, what areas are cut out, what are not. Uh, any other, like a black background would actually be much better looking because a black background you could still like it kind of blends in a little bit with some of the colors, but you can still see it. I mean, especially in the background being so lit like this, uh, being as well lit as it is. Uh, more light maybe will make a difference. We'll find out today for sure, but let's go ahead and turn on the blue. And this is a very clear image of what it is that you see. Now, first thing you want to, I want to point out is you're seeing that the, the, the microphone is fading in and out of existence. Uh, and the reason why is because the camera doesn't know whether or not to include that field. So if, if I move back a little bit, it's going to eventually disappear and you have like a sweet spot. But if I get close to it like this, it sees my face and it sees that and it believes that it's part of the same field and it keeps it there. Very cool technology. All of us use a webcam, or I'm sorry, a, a, a microphone. So it's kind of something that needs to be dealt with. You have, maybe you just deal with having it in the frame and just crop it out or you move it in front of your person. So that way it kind of stays in the frame. But even if it's in front of me, because it's depth perception, if I move back a little bit, it's still gonna try to cut it out. So if I move like this and I move back, it's gonna try to cut it out. And then if I move back too far, what happens is I fade out of existence. That's a problem, especially if you own one of these that you can't even see because it's not, the depth isn't there. It's a steering wheel. Oh yeah, that's the other thing, by the way. Um, so if I lean back in the chair to drive, the fucking thing fades me out. Isn't that dumb? Look at this, look, look. As you can see, it is kind of a pain in the ass because it only senses a certain depth. There's no settings anywhere that I could find that says adjust settings to see you if you're farther away. So once you get to a certain point, unfortunately, you're gone, which is great if you need to step away from the computer, you could be like, hey guys, I'm gonna go get a drink. And then when you come back, that part is neat, <laughs> that's about it. Headset. This is a light colored headset. It shoots, it stands out from the back of the room at night, but here, because it's, it's relatively lit back there, you can actually see, it's kind of lit back there. You see the blinds as I move my hands around here. There's a lot of backlight. Black headphones, put these on. Essentially the same results. So what this tells us is the separation is not necessarily occurring based off of the color. So before we even get into the light test, I can already tell you it probably isn't going to make that much of a difference. Maybe a little bit, but not that much of a difference because it really is pulling based off of depth. Now, facial recognition. This part is interesting. First, it does indeed recognize faces. Uh, unfortunately, it only recognizes one at a time. Uh, through my testing, it only recognizes one at a time. Now, I don't have another face, so here's what I've done. And this is actually probably the most interesting part of this is that not only does it sense, you know, faces, it senses faces with depth. So here is 
a picture of Mario, right? We see it, okay? It's, it sees a face, but it's not, I'm not, I'm not gonna sense the depth, okay? And here is Fred Bob. Fred Bob has depth. He is a fully, like, three-dimensional object. Now, if I put Fred Bob here, just like, maybe like this, and then I leave the frame, <laughs> so this is Fred Bob now taking up all of the uh, all of the space here, and you notice that uh, obviously it's cutting me out. I am my face is right next to Fred Bob. It's right next to this creeper face, and it does not pick me up. Uh, this is what I'm talking about, where it has issues seeing more than one face. It will eventually pop me in. Maybe eventually it does like another reevaluation of the scene. But for now, I'm gone. As a matter of fact, it will probably, if you have two faces, it might just choose one. And if somebody moves out of frame, there I was for a moment. Uh, that's pretty much it. But like right now, it just it just sees this face, and that's it. Now let me see if I can't pull Mario. Again, Mario is recognized as an object, not as a face. It sees face features, I'm sure. But it's not a three-dimensional thing, so it do, it knows not to do anything with this. So Mario now is uh, in front of. There you go. There you go. Now it sees me. So now I'm now I'm popped into the frame. <laughs> so imagine playing this with two people, one person popping in and out at random, uh, and that's it. Like it now, it probably sees this as an object or something. I don't know. I don't know what it's, what it's thinking. But the fact that I was sitting here like this while I was talking to you guys and it didn't pick me up is kind of ridiculous. So it doesn't support more than one face. Uh, very well. Maybe on paper it supposedly does, but in practice, uh, it's kind of iffy. Now it's just Fred Bob, the Fred Bob show, and that's pretty much it. Let's move it back here. You guys are gonna love this. All the way off the frame. Oh my gosh. All the way off the frame. Can it see me? Hello? Look at my head is in front of the damn thing. Let me move him out of the frame here, put it on the ground, and maybe it'll pick me up. There it is. So there you go. Now, showing how depth perception works is kind of a good idea to show how it works when you are reacting to stuff. We know that if we have a steering wheel here and I get too far back and I'm racing, I'm in and out of the frame. I'm like a ghost. My hands don't show up, right? Those go, those disappear too. It recognizes that I'm one solid unit, which is amazing. The technology, that's fucking great, right? But the problem is that it has a limit to how far it's going to actually map things. So if I reach over and I go, hey man, thanks for the sub. I appreciate it. I had to, I had to tone down the thumbs for some reason because like doesn't, it doesn't quite. So as I move closer here, you see that it just takes, it just blocks that whole thing out, and that's it. I mean, what, what's the impact of that? Well, I mean, you can't give like really excited thumbs up. You got to be like, thank you. <laughs> you can't go, all right, man. Oh, go, oh, hold on, hold on. All right, because then you get this blocky, crazy mess all over the place. But now I'm gone. <laughs> Hello, I'm right here. Me, my face, my... <laughs> Hello, today we are going to talk about cookie. And then after that, we're going to talk about more cookie. And that's pretty much it. Can I please have my face back? <sighs> so now here we are in a ridiculously lit room. Okay, the, all the windows are open, all the lights are on, there's a light right in my face. This is almost ideal for a streamer, right? Perhaps maybe some side lights or something like that if you want to really get crazy, but this is a little kind of above average for a streamer who is trying to light his surroundings. I have the power of the sun. I have the power of bright light right up here. You can actually see the difference there, right? So I have, and I also changed my outfits to, you know, uh, so, God, they hope they win. Uh, so I even changed my outfit so that way I get a crisper line and because black would actually just blend into a lot of the stuff behind me that's black. And that should be it. So now let's do a test and we'll see what it looks like with my cutouts like this. This is on quality level five, okay? So this is the highest quality level. I have not played with any of the settings, none of them. You can see that it's it's having a really difficult time working with the letters here. Uh, it's having, a, obviously the microphone is gonna cause issues, uh, but we get roughly the same results. It doesn't, again, this goes back to what I was saying initially, where it doesn't necessarily matter what it is that I'm wearing because it doesn't use, color, doesn't use color separation. It uses, uh, it uses depth. So even if I have lights galore and a rim light and everything, a key light, and it's just lights everywhere, it's hardly going to make a difference. You can actually see it's still, it's going nuts down here. It doesn't know what to do with, it doesn't know what to do with the giants. <laughs> so, so it's just going to continue going nuts. The same issues still occur. Like thumbs up somebody, my hand disappears. If I bring up this guy and I put him down and I back out of the frame, and I pick him up, I can wave him around. And once again, I am not there. I might pop in eventually, but 
you can see that it just basically looks at one face. I'm right next to him. I mean, I should... <laughs> let's move him back a little bit. And then let's see, can I get my face in front of it? Uh, uh, all the way. Hey! Uh, wow, really? I thought by now, seriously, I'm covering the face. I'm covering the face with my face. It does not see it. Can I just... Can I... God damn it. <laughs> so... So that's it. I mean, we've tested it in bright scenarios. We tested it in dark, you know, dark, dimly lit room scenarios. It seems to me that... The, the technology on paper is awesome. It really is amazing. And it's in, and like even in action, you can kind of see how it would come in handy. It would, it would do stuff. But unfortunately, because of the way it's like crazy jaggy, it doesn't quite do it. It's very distracting for the viewer. Very distracting. Actually, there are lots of complaints about it. Even though I take up such a small, tiny portion of the screen. I mean, really, when I'm streaming, I'm like this. And even down here, you can see the flickering and everything all over the place. Imagine if there's things moving around behind me. It's, it's, it's annoying and it's distracting for the viewer. So that's the biggest thing. If you're streaming, you don't want to put something, you want things to be unintrusive to the actual content that you're pre presenting to everybody. If you have this crazy flickering, crazy mess happening, no one's going to want to watch it because it's distracting. So that kind of takes this thing out of the running period. And that's pretty much it. That's kind of the end right there. It's like, the, I could say, hey, yeah, it works kind of, you know, pretty well, but ultimately, if it's distracting for the viewer, it's not going to do you any favors. So that pretty much takes it out of the running completely. It's just not worth it. And that's kind of the bottom line. So thank you very much for joining me today in this test. I'm going to continue to work with it a little bit, but I'm probably going to return it. I'm being honest. I'm probably just going to return it. I could use that money towards maybe a C922 and test that out. Hey, that thing might suck too. I'm not saying that thing's any better. It might be garbage. We don't know. We haven't tested it out yet. But the second I do get one, I'll absolutely put another video like this up for you guys. And hopefully you guys enjoy it. Thank you very much for joining me on the BFF Report. My name is Mike BAK Phony. God, I hope they win. My hair is gone. Boom, baby. Clunkers! Toast to another year. Thank you, Clunkers. I can't even give you a fucking thumbs up. I'm like, thumbs up. <laughs> Oh no, I'm gone. Hold on. There you go.